Does Allah love the disbelievers? It gives them chances. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You have to ask the scholar. Does he love so how come you know what the, the, the Bible God does when he loves or doesn't? But you don't know if your own God loves. What is martyrdom? Thank you very much. What is martyrdom? Thank you very much. What is martyrdom? What is, what is, what is the definition what is of suicide? <laughs> definition of suicide. What you see? He's yourself. clearly refuted himself. <laughs> Allah encourages people to fight in the name of Allah. And if they are killed, they will receive a reward, reward in heaven. Is that not suicide? Can you, can you, um, from the Old Testament, tell me where um, it says that the Messiah will be killed, crucified, and resurrected? From the Old Testament. From the Old Testament. Okay, so. So we'll go to some, there's a few passages, we'll read them out, Psalm 22. So I'll read out the verses that allude to a crucifixion and then I'll substantiate with non-Christian evidence as well. So I'll start from verse... You are a sinner. So who is your savior? Eleven. So it says, Be not far from me, for trouble is near, and there is none to help. Many bulls encompass me, strong bulls of Bashan surround me. They open wide their mouths at me, like a ravening lion, like a ravening and roaring lion. I am poured out like water, and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax, it is melted within my breath. My strength is dried up like a pot's head and my tongue sticks to my jaw. You lay me in the dust of death, for dogs encompass me, a company of evildoers encircles me, and they have pierced my hands and my feet. And we all know what happens in crucifixions. I can count all my bones, they stare and gloat over me. They divide my garments amongst them, for my clothing they cast lots. And this is exactly what we see happening with Christ. They cast lots for his garments. And then it says, but you, O Lord, do not be far off. O you may help, come quickly to my aid. And then I'll go to Isaiah. Isaiah 53. Uh, what verse? I'll start from one. It says, who has believed what he has heard from us? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? For he grew up before him like a young plant and like a root out of dry ground. He has no form or majesty that we should look at him and no beauty that we should desire him. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows Yet we esteem him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. He was pierced for our transgressions, and he was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace, and with his wounds we are healed. And all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth like a lamb that is led to the slaughter and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, he opened not his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away and for his generation who considered that he was cut off out of the land of living, which is death, because he was cut off out of the land of living, stricken for the transgression 
of my people. And then the last verse, I'll just go to nine. It says, and they made his grave with the wicked and with a rich man in his death. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. And there's one other verse. Let me just find it in Hosea. Yes. When it says that the Messiah will be inflicted in some sort of uh, pain or yeah, yeah, yeah. God will be you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it doesn't specifically say that he'll be killed in prison. Not in that explicit. It doesn't say the word crucifixion. So the thing is, so, for example, when you don't have it, not in the way you you want it. Because if what I go to a Jew and I ask them, is there someone called the Messiah? They will say yes. If you say to them, can you give me a direct verse that says this person is the Messiah or called the Messiah? They'll say no, because we have to understand the, the hermeneutics of the Bible. We cannot impose our own understanding on the text. Otherwise, if we use your criteria, even the Jews wouldn't be waiting for a Messiah because it doesn't state it in that same way. So we have to use the Bible to interpret it in its own way. Michael Lekona, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his Yeah, Michael Lekona. Yeah, you've heard of him, right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's a... Uh, I think he's a liberal he's, scholar. He's a, he's a evangelist, Christian, and he's a New, uh, New Testament scholar. historian. Yeah, yeah. And he says that clearly there is no manuscript or otherwise yeah. to say that the Messiah will be killed in prison. There isn't. Yeah. To suggest otherwise is good. Yeah, in the, and as I've said, I've not said in that way. So let me ask you a question. Do you believe Muhammad is in the Torah? I just, yeah, but I just so we have a criteria. I, I believe, yeah, in some passages that okay. you can argue that, that he's All right. talking about Muhammad. So he now, specifically talk about exactly person, just so, so using your own so, criteria it doesn't say this person is muhammad but you can look at the passage and relate it to muhammad but then if other people do that you want to see where it specifically says this this and this will happen it's a double standard because how do you come this, this to your event conclusion is a great event that's going to happen yeah the messiah is going to be killed and crucified for yeah. the sins of man but right? in but it's, using it's that same logic event. isn't muhammad a supposedly event. a huge event as well it's a huge event and uh, there should be some sort of mention to say yeah. this, this event is going to happen, it's going to come. So how do you so account to for... So greatest prophets like Moses or any of the prophets, yeah. I'm sure God would have given some sort of hint that you know, yeah. his son is going to come to save mankind, basically. Yeah. Some sort of hint, yeah. but there isn't. Yeah. But there is, and that's why we have what we call biblical... We, you you but, have it on the New Testament. But this is what we have, why we have biblical like, prophecy, because let me, that's why I was going to even show you, for example, and I'll show you from Jewish sources. Because the, the, the Jewish sources will only will only either embellish or just repeat what the what the, the Greek sources say or, or the Hebrew sources say. No, I'm going to show but, you something. Yeah, but the, those I'm going are to the New Testament sources. Because I'm going to show you something. Because no, to suggest that because the Messiah will be killed. That's, in that's fact, false. Because you know, I'll tell you why. I'll, I'll says, tell you why. If the, if the Messiah is killed. It's the false Messiah. And I'll tell you why, because now, we have... Correct we, me if I'm wrong, we have, doesn't it say that in the Old Testament, in the Torah, that if the Messiah is killed, it's not the real Messiah. No. That's why when the Jews killed that, him, they believed wholeheartedly that no. it wasn't the Messiah, because he cannot be killed. No, I'll tell you why. For example, I'm going to give you some Jewish sources, non-Christian sources. Um, if I can quickly find it. Uh, actually... So, this is from a Jewish source, and I read to you Isaiah 53, and I said that was about Christ. Now, this is yeah, yeah, I know, but this is this is what I'm going to give you. This is what I'm going to give you. Yeah, this is what I'm going to give you evidence. Now, this is something called the Targum. It's basically an Aramaic of the um, Hebrew. Because in the first century, we know Jews couldn't read Hebrew. It was almost a dead language. So it's from Greek and Aramaic mainly. So this is from one of their earliest rabbis. And I'll just ask you to read where it is. All right. So I'll read Isaiah 53. I can't see the word up. Oh, there it is. So I read Isaiah from verse 9. It says, and this is their interpretation. Nothing to do with Christianity. He shall gather our captives 
from affliction and pain and who shall be able to narrate the wonderful works which shall be done for us in his days. He shall remove the rule of the nations from the land of Israel. The sins which my people have committed have come upon them and he shall deliver the wicked into hell and the riches of treasure which they got by violence unto the death of Abaddon that they who commit sin shall not be shall not remain and that they should not speak folly with their mouth but it says and it was the pleasure of the Lord to refine and purify the remnant of his people in order to cleanse their soul, souls from sin that they might see the kingdom of the Messiah that their sons and daughters might multiply and prolong their days and those that keep the law of the Lord shall prosper through his pleasure. So when I read it to you, it didn't use the word Messiah. But even from the rabbis, they told, said this verse was about the Messiah. So this is even, because if you believe as a Muslim, the Torah was given to the, Hebrew, the Israelites, the Israelites have to then have to be able to understand the Torah. But they're mentioning the Torah, uh, the Messiah in this passage, their own rabbis, because they believe this passage was about the, the Messiah. And this is not a Christian text. Now, we also see the Qumran community, um, the Dead Sea Scrolls. And what we find in the scrolls is that they believe that there was going to be a Messiah that was, uh, that was killed and wounded. So these are things before Christianity. Do you believe in the manuscript? Do you believe in Well, the Torah. No, we don't follow because we only follow the Bible. But my point was, yeah, but my point was evidence from a non-Christian perspective that these, because I said to you, we have to understand how what is biblical hermeneutics. We can't go. I'm giving you one of the. He's a Christian. Yeah, and he, well, he's not going to be biased. Yeah, towards and, and, yeah, but that's what I'm saying. I said so this. I, I didn't want to call to you an outside source because I thought, I thought if I called to you, let's like, say yeah, Steve Carrera, I'm, who's, yes. a, who's a historian, you've heard of him, yeah? Probably Steve Carrera. No. He's a, he's a historian and he does a lot of talk about um, Christianity as a history. And if it meets the criteria in historic history, uh, but he, he has his own thing, right? And he even talks like, yeah. you know, because like, have you heard of the theory of, uh, sorry, the hypothesis of Q? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. So, and yeah. apparently he goes and say that uh, that can't be true, but he's got his own yeah, yeah. hypothesis. Yeah, but, 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 but what I'm saying, like, I, I, I didn't go for an outside I know, source. I know, I know. That's what I'm trying to explain. Because, so many different ways. because the so I approached you, um, uh, thingy, uh, a Christian scholar, yeah, yeah, yeah. who is a historian. Yeah, and I don't right, disagree right? with what he's saying, yeah, I'm just trying so, to clarify. So, can we just agree that yeah. it doesn't say it in that way? So, so we can agree that the Old Testament does not say not that the Messiah will be killed and crucified. Can not in one that? long sentence, no. What? Can we just agree that it doesn't say it? Yeah, not in one long sentence. Okay. It alludes to it. Okay. it and that's what, that's what yeah, I want yeah. to hear. That's yeah. what, just yes, basically. Yeah. Okay. Because what I'm saying now is that we have to look at... Yeah, but let me just express okay. that point. Because we have to look at it logically. Where that the Qumran community, when we found the Dead Sea Scrolls, they believed that the Messiah was going to die. Okay. Okay. I'll, give, I'll, give you, I'll give you the references. Now, my question would be, if these were Jews, what caused them to come to that conclusion? There must have been something in the Bible that made them believe that there was going to be something that detrimental that happened to the Messiah. So that's why I'm saying, how do we utilize? Because I agree, it doesn't say he's going to be crucified. My argument, that's why I brought the verse that says it's, it's his hands and feet will be pierced. Even based upon that, it doesn't mean crucifixion, but when it happened and they read back, they put two and two together because some prophecies are retrospective. You understand? Because imagine if it, we know that some people rejected the Messiah. Even in your Quran, as your Islamic belief shows, that some people wanted to kill the Messiah. So now, if it gave the exact details in the exact way they wanted, what is to stop those people to go and kill him? That's why we see Christ was had to even move when Herod, when the wise men went to Herod, he said, yeah, 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 tell me so I can come and worship him. But he wanted to kill the Messiah. So this is why God hides things within the Bible for the, the truthful believers. And this is why we have to understand, and I'm not even, that's why I wasn't using a Christian source. We can go to the Dead Sea, um, the Qumran community, and the Dead Sea Scrolls come before the Bible and look at what did they believe about the Messiah. So if they believed he was going to die, what, ever, what were they using to come to that opinion? Just, uh, just the last thing, just to um, wrap things up. Uh, it's diverting from our original conversation. Yeah. Um, basically, um, if I hurt you in any shape or form, would you forgive me 
without needing a, a, a sacrifice, a blood sacrifice, animal or otherwise. Could you forgive me? I could forgive you. Yeah. So, with that being said, you are more forgiving than um, Yahweh, or yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, uh, whatever you want to call him, yeah. God, the Father. You are more forgiving than God the Father. Well, you would have a problem with that con uh, uh, conclusion. Because we know that Jews were ordered to make a... Wait, wait. We know Jews were ordered to make a sacrifice to atone for sins. Do you agree with that, yes or no? Yeah, but you, you believe... Yeah, so that means... So, but if you agree with that, that means Allah told Moses to kill an animal to atone for the sin. So you'd have to tell me why did Allah give that instruction to Moses? It's a miracle, right? Because but you've you taken a huge shift from animals to human sacrifice now. God, he, he could have, like, he's the creator of the universe, yeah. the heavens and the earth, yes? Yeah. And how did he create it? Did it require any sacrifices? No. He just said, he created it with his word. Okay. Yeah. So, and at the end of the day, the sin that he he's came to save us from, yeah. he could have forgiven it. But he required, he shifted from animal sacrifice to human sacrifice. Okay. That's a big shift. Okay. That's a big shift. So, uh, but, and, but, and but you as a human being, okay. you as a human being can forgive me for without requiring okay. an animal or otherwise sacrifice will say that, you know, you're more loving than this so, God. Okay, let me ask you a question. Do you have children? Oh. Yeah. You have children? Yeah. If something bad was going to happen to your child, would you give your life for your, to save your life, children's life? Of course. Why? Of course. But why? Why? Say, say the why. I, I get where you're going. No, wait, wait. But get, get say the why. But but yeah, but get, wait, give me an answer. Okay, why? Push this um, yeah, but answer why? Push this under. Answer why? 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 Because uh, I'll give. If my son didn't live up, uh, if my life was compatible or whatever, I'll give it. Yeah, I'm if saying I your see, whole life. If I, whole see, life. if I see a, a car coming towards my son, yeah. I'll jump in front of him. Why? Yeah. Why? Because it's my son. Yeah, yeah. but why? Yes, you love uh, because you love him. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. Yeah. now yeah. 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 all right. So now you agree. That, that, that one of the strongest emotions humans have is love. When you give, when you see, like when you have your first child and your first child comes out, that is one of the greatest experiences you can have because it changes your perspective. To push your son from yeah, but we'll, we'll, we'll get, we'll, we'll get, we'll get to that point. But let's establish first that love is one of the greatest deeds that anyone can do. Because Christ says there's no greater love, greater deed that someone can do than lay his life down with his, um, his, his friend. So now, God is giving us a demonstration of his love for creation. Because I can ask you, because, because Christ, who we believe created the universe, created the world, is now coming to give us a demonst demonstrable example of how love is uh, demonstrated so he's given his own because everyone would agree god is like perfection so god is love is his core essence yes is his core essence but wait, wait, wait before we jump off yeah i know but let me just answer a question so, so now for you what would you say is the greatest thing Allah has done for humanity? One thing, one thing, one thing. The greatest thing was to give Muhammad, I would say. Or to give, reveal the Quran. I don't know, there's many things. I, I, I'm not... I'm, not I'm just asking you, I'm not, it's not about scholar. I'm asking in your opinion what you believe is the greatest gift. But I would say... I would say it's the Quran. It's the Quran. So now, we have agreed that you would give your life for your child. Yeah, exactly. And now Christ is, this is what Christians will say, this is the greatest gift that God can demonstrate to us to say that he will give his own life or go through this humiliation, this experience of being whipped and brutalized to demonstrate how much he loves our creation. When we would do the exact same thing for our children, but you're saying the greatest thing Allah has done is give the Quran. You know, like, it wasn't God who came down and suffered, it was his son who suffered. Yeah? And the other thing is, when you say, when you say God, God when you, when you say uh, Jesus loves you, he, uh, Jesus does not love, in, in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, 11, Jesus does not love those who sin sexually. On 1 Corinthians 6, 10, Jesus does not love those who uh, uh, gossip. 
Yeah, read, Jesus read does out, not. Read out the verse. Jesus does not. Yeah, read, 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 read it. Read. No, 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 no don't just quote the verses. I'm going to go for a list. Yeah, yeah but we don't know what. But you say you love. Yeah, but listen to what I'm saying. Wait, 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 wait. I'm saying love. Yeah, but wait. And then again. Slow down. You see, all you're trying to do. Wait, 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 wait. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. If you want to give the verses, let's read the verse in the context. Don't just say. Say the name. I'm showing you. Yeah, but let's not. Or Jesus himself says it himself. Either God is speaking. Yeah, but let us look at the verses. Let us see the verses. And he's saying that he doesn't love these people. Let us see the verses. Because I can say to you, does Allah love? Does Allah love the disbelief? Does Allah love the disbelief? Let's look at First Corinthians. Does Allah love the disbelief? Does Allah love the disbelief? He gives them chances. I don't know. I don't know. You have to ask the scholar. So how come you know what the Bible God does when He loves? On nothing, but you don't know if your own God loves. Why don't you study the Quran? So why is it? I, I, why why I, I don't do you? I do, but you know what? I can't uh, make how, it. how do you I, study I, the Quran and you can't even answer that question? I can't give you a definite answer. Why? But how do you know the study? How do you know the Bible verses, but not the Quranic verses? Don't you think that's a bit of a don't you think that's a bit of hypocrisy? You have to understand the Arabic. You have to study the Arabic. Why don't you? I studied the Arabic a little bit, but I cut my study short. But then give me the English. No, I'm, I'm in English. So, yeah, you can't understand the Arabic. I just find that very strange. English. I just because the Arabic is one thing. thing. Yeah, but I just, in translation you're gonna lose it. Yeah, but we want the English. The, the verse that says Allah he's loves not it, because Bible. he's gone through a long you list. Read your Bible in Greek of, or Latin. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, but you're reading the Bible you read it, in, you English, read it in English. But you can read the Quran in English. You read it in English. Don't you think that's a double standard, though? Sorry. Don't you think that's a double standard? You're giving me the. I don't think so. You're giving me the Bible verses, but you don't know that you can't answer my question. About read the Quran, the, which is your own belief. I, I could I could quote the, the Bible verses in Hebrew if you like or Greek, but it doesn't necessarily mean you've got to understand it. But you read the Bible in and you read, as a Muslim read the Quran. But when, I, when, I, when I memorize the Quran, first it's all memorization. And from there you, you understand you read it in English. No, I didn't get that part where I understood what I was memorizing. Yeah, but I memorized. Do you read the Quran in English? No, I don't know. You never read it in English. No, I have to understand it. So you read, you memorized the Quran, and you don't know anything. That, so how do you know anything about your religion? Huh? Well, I've been taught, and what I learned myself. That's it. What did you learn for yourself? Yeah, man. Now we'll, because now we'll you're reading the Quran. No, but it doesn't make sense. You're reading the Quran in Arabic, so you've memorized something you don't understand. Like, can we get to the Quran? Because now you're trying to go for character No, no, it's nothing to do with character We have to establish the Quran. Him now. Come on, man. <laughs> you want to read verses where God says he doesn't love certain people. But I asked him, does Allah love you, the disbelievers? He said he doesn't know. No, no, my point is, how do you know more about the Bible? My point is, no, 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 my bro. That's a fair question, though, Mr. Brown. We can get to the verse, but I, don't I started, I started, this is how I started. What verse? No, I don't want to hear the verse. This is how I started. I just want to hear the verse you're trying to quote from that God doesn't know. So, first Corinthians 6, 9, 11, Jesus says, uh, Jesus does not love all who sin sexually. What does he mean by sexually? And yeah, on, and, sure, and again, you sure that's go for it. Yeah, yeah, that's what he says. What's that? I got it from Bible Hub. What's that? First Corinthians 6, 9, 11. But let's continue. Yeah. <laughs> what is there to continue? Well, I can quote you many verses where God himself says he does not love those who But why don't you, ex why don't you go to then, you say, John 3, 16? Wait, 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 you say he loves you. Do you yeah? ever read that but then the proper Bible he does not he does is. not come down himself okay. he pushes his son in front of him with bus how is that love Where does that say it's that not love love would be him way. coming down but but love would do, be do, do, do you agree wait, 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 wait. forgive wait, wait. rather than uh, let mankind go do you with agree sin. do you that's agree that Christ says do you agree that Christ says I laid down my own life Mr Brown Mr Brown Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown, I know you can hear what I'm saying. Do you agree that Christ says no one takes my life from me, but I like lay it down myself of my own will? Of my, do you agree that Christ said he lays down his own life by his own accord? 
did no matter what. Do you agree with it first? Well, I'll, I'll answer you, it. No, no, I'll answer it, but do you agree? Uh, yes. Yes, he do did. Do you agree? He, he laid his own life down. Yes. Do you agree with it? So th for me, for me, that is, that, that is, no way, that is called suicide. When you kill yourself, it's called suicide. But he it's 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 suicide. So, wait, 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 Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Let, God, let's talk about the suicide say that he loves you, but he In your Quran, does it say his son, that Allah, if he didn't love Allah his son, he would not does, push his son does and does Allah us. encourage he would come wait, himself? Does Allah encourage say, wait, 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 people wait, 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 to go and sacrifice wait, themselves wait, in the you name said of it Allah? Yourself. You said it yourself. Answer that question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said it yourself. Answer the question. You said it yourself. Answer the question. You can forgive me. You can if you're being sincere, let's have a dialogue. Now, let let me. Is it true or false? According Talk over each other. Yeah, let me let me talk and you respond. So is it true or false? According to your Quran, Allah encourages people to fight in the name of Allah. And if they are killed, they will receive a reward, reward in heaven. Is that not suicide? According to your definition. Is Allah encouraging suicide? The way of Allah. So the British Army, when they went to the yeah, what is martyrdom? What is martyrdom? So they went there, knowing fully well they're gonna die. So is that suicide? No, it's fighting for a cause. Excuse me, what's martyrdom? Where, Answer where the you question. willingly kill yourself, hang yourself, no, like in prison, no, 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 yeah? that's called suicide. Yeah. That's why more or less Jesus What is martyrdom? Yeah. Can you explain? What's martyrdom? What's martyrdom? Where, whatever the action what is, is martyrdom? Martyrdom? What's martyrdom? So the, when, the, when, when the prisoner killed himself, they have, they have a reason. They're depressed or whatever. Yeah? So Jesus' justification is that I'm killing myself for humankind. Where's the justification? How is that love? How is that love to let humankind, uh, let humankind have the sin in the first place? God. If it was love, he would have forgiven mankind. But he didn't. He let us continue, and then what did he do? Son, you go for the moving bus, not me. Yeah, You die for three days and three nights, and that's enough. That's enough to save mankind. But has it saved mankind? There's more sin on earth right now than there was before. But he, he agreed, he agreed. Him as a human being is more loving than Yahweh. Now let, let's go to the verse. Because uh, are you listening? Now, Mr. Brown, Mr. Brown. Now, it says, Lo, Allah has brought from the believers their lives and their wealth because the garden will be theirs. They shall fight in the way of Allah and shall be slain. In the way of Allah. They shall slay and be slain. It is a promise which is binding on him in the Torah in the way and in the Gospel Allah. and the Quran. In the way of Allah. 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 So is that suicide? 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 What's the definition of suicide? What's the definition of suicide? You tell us. What? To take what your own life for. Whatever reason, Jesus take, take your own life. life. So if you go into a war, knowing that you're going to die, did Jesus take his own life? If you go into a war, knowing that you're going to die, is that suicide? Willingly. Willingly. Is that suicide? That's suicide. When they say suicide, that's suicide. suicide. But you know what? When you know what about moment, suicide, you guys are more loving than your God. You're both right. You guys are more loving than your God. What has he said about your God? What? He's been hypocritical. You guys are more loving than Jesus resurrected. God, you see? What you Jesus guys, resurrected? So what? He went for the suffering. So Jesus resurrected. Would you allow your son to Do you know why he died? Do you know why he died? Do you know why he died? No matter the justification. Do you know why? Do you know why? Do you know anything about the resurrection? He the files now trying to justify it. We need to let all these things. We need to love and thingy. Yeah, the gays justify it. The homosexuals justify that we got this. We were born gay. Now the pedophiles are trying to justify it. We're born, we're liking kids. They're trying to justify this. They're trying to put this argument forward. Now here you are trying to justify suicide. But you know what? You've got suicide. Day, suicide. You're more loving. What is going on? What is martyrdom? What is martyrdom? Thank you very much. What is martyrdom? Thank you very much. What is martyrdom? What is, what is the definition what is of suicide? Definition of suicide. What you see? He's yourself. clearly refuted himself okay. with his own definition. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Take care. <laughs> so clearly, clearly, again, we see more hypocrisy and double standards from the Islamic, Islamic Dawah carriers because clearly he tried to 
come across as sincere, but that was not the, the point. He tried to use the phrase from Mike Lacona to say the crucifixion is not in the Old Testament. And I agree, it doesn't say crucifixion. The passages talk about someone whose hands and feet, feet were going to be pierced. It's only retrospectively when Christ was crucified that they understood these passages related to Christ. And that's why I went into outside sources from non-Christian sources which say that even Chris communities before Christianity had believed that the Messiah would be killed or he'll come close to death. And we also see um, passages where even in the rabbis they talk about Isaiah 53 being referred to the Messiah. So clearly we see this is how prophecies work. They're not all explicit, they're embedded within the text. But then he had no problem to say Muhammad was in the Old Testament. But it didn't say this person's going to come with the Quran. It didn't say this is going to be an Arabic prophet. It didn't say this is going to be someone called Muhammad. But then how come he can find Muhammad in the Bible? But when they're Israelites, are reading the book that was given to them to identify who the Messiah was going to be, he then tries to reject it. Then when we asked him about the greatest uh, deed someone can do, he admitted he would give his life for his own children. Why? Because that is the greatest deed that anyone can do. When Christ came to demonstrate this greatest deed, then he's trying to say it's a suicide mission. But then if he has a problem with suicide, then he should then throw his Quran in the bin, which says that if you go and fight in the cause of Allah and reach martyrdom, you will receive a reward in heaven. So clearly we have to break down this Islamic script, which is full of hypocritical attacks on the Bible. How can he read passages from the Bible, which says God doesn't love, but then when we asked about asking the same question about Allah's love, he said he doesn't know. He said he doesn't study the Quran. But that you're studying the Bible, but you don't know your own religion. You've memorized the Quran in Arabic and you didn't know what one word said. Does that make logical sense to anyone? So this is why we have to clip, have a criteria and break down the Islamic argument. Because what they like to do, and this is what we see many of the Dawah carries in the park, do they go up to unlearned Christians, bring out these verses, but they're very hypocritical. I'm preaching Christianity. Go on, Soko. Even last week, I gave a video about Christianity, so that refutes him. It's a 10 minute video. Tell Jordan M to shut up. If, if Jordan M wants to come and debate me, he can come and debate me. Tell him he's a white hooligan. <laughs> I won't say he's a white hooligan, but he's just someone who doesn't know what he's talking about. <laughs> So, so on that note, until next week. There you go. <laughs> Calling him out. Come, Come down out. to the park. Tell him right That's here, it. right now. And, and this is the thing I also want to say. The hypocrisy oh, of people like Jordan M <laughs> and the Islamic Dao team, oh, this is called Speaker's Corner. Yeah. Anyone can come and speak about whatever they want to. Exactly. It, we are not dimmies where someone says, oh, do you know what? Talk about this. If I wanted to come and talk about beef burgers for the rest of my life, a vegan could not come and tell me to speak about something else. Exactly. So what right does it give people like Jordan M to tell yeah, us yeah, to talk yeah, about yeah. Christianity? Yeah, yeah. Why doesn't he go up to Hashim and tell him to talk about Islam? Yeah, when have we ever heard um, Hashim talk about the deen of Islam? Yeah. He talks about the Trinity every week. <laughs> when had he ever talked years. about the, um, the, the Prophet Muhammad, what his teachings were? And now Jordan's apologising. Well, he should apologise. <laughs> Hypocrisy. Hypocrisy. <laughs> we have to keep challenging these supremacist yeah. views. Yeah. So on that note... Yeah. <laughs> Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out.